Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Stop using your freedom to cover up your sin. I want to let you know that God has called you to be free. The Bible says for freedom, Christ has saved you. The Bible also says that whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. So God has saved you so you can be free from the bondages of sin. God has saved you so that you can be free from the guilt and the worry that sin brings. You no longer have to be a slave of sin. Jesus Christ has broken those chains by what he did on the cross for me and for you. He paid the price and he became our punishment and he became our substitution right there on that cross. God treated him as the worst sinner ever that was alive and put on him the consequences and the condemnation of all the sins of all of humanity. So because of that punishment that Jesus took, holy, perfect Jesus took our punishment. Now you and I can share in his holiness. You see, God treated a perfect holy person as the worst sinner. Now, because a perfect holy person was treated as the worst sinner and already paid the price for all our sins, now you and me, God will treat us as righteous, as holy, as flawless, as his children. Now, of course, we're not flawless. We still have a lot of flaws. We still have a lot of errors. But because of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, you no longer have to be a slave of sin. You no longer have to be in bondage of sin and guilt and regret. You can be free. You're free from those things. Those things don't have to keep you bound anymore. Those things don't have to keep you in a repetitive cycle anymore. And you might say, that's what I want. I want that freedom. I, I want that liberty from those sins or, or those habitual practices that I continue to practice. You might say, I want that freedom. You got the freedom. All you need to do is trust the Lord and walk forward in faith, believing his word, practicing his word, and you're going to start to see a change begin to happen in your life. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of Timothy that all the word of God is profitable for rebuking, for teaching, for instructing. It says, so that the people of God can be equipped for every good work. See, when somebody becomes a firefighter, they equip them with the uniforms that they need, with the tools that they need. When somebody becomes a police officer, they equip them with the tools and the uniforms that they need. When somebody becomes a plumber, they equip them with the uniforms and the tools they need. Any job you can think of, people are equipped to do it. Even your barber is equipped to perform the job that he's doing. He has the cape. He has the tools. He has the antibacterial that he sprays the clippers with. Every single occupation has tools to be able to be successful in the job that they're completing. Well, I want to let you know that as a Christian, God is going to equip you. Right now, you might see yourself. And you might see your flaws, you might see your errors, you might see your mistakes, you might see the things that you're battling with, but I want to let you know that God is going to equip you. And how does God equip you? When you trust him, <laughs> when you walk forward in faith, he begins to add unto you the things that you need. So right now you might not see yourself the way you might want to see yourself, but continue to walk forward. God is equipping you. So God has called you for freedom. He is setting you free. He is going to equip you. He's going to give you everything you need. You're not going to stay the same. A Christian never stays the same. A person that's trusting God never stays the same. Someone who trusts the Lord always grows. That's a guaranteed promise. They always grow. It's like when you plant a seed into the ground, they water it, the, the sunlight gives the sun, and the seed grows. Same thing. The word of God was planted in us, but God is the one who sends the rain and God is the one who sends the light in our lives through his Holy Spirit and through his word and the seed will grow. Right now, it might be barely grown and you still might not see it because it's under the ground and I'm just using this figuratively. I'm just talking about you might not see the change or the growth that you want to see. Continue to trust him. Continue to walk forward in faith. God is sending the rain through his word. God is sending the light through his Holy Spirit and through his word. And that seed will grow. And you're going to look back one day and you're going to say, wow, look at everything that God has done in my life. So with that being said, the freedoms, the liberties, the growth that God is going to bring to you. I want to tell you this. Don't use your freedom to cover up your sin. This freedom that God has given us so that we can grow and so that we can live in peace and free in our Christian life. And so that we can serve God the way that he wants us to serve him. But that doesn't mean because of the freedom you have, the forgiveness you have, that doesn't mean that you can use God's grace. And I'm going like this because a lot of people make God's grace cheap and greasy. 
That doesn't mean you can use God's grace to cover up your sin. Now, God's grace will lift you up. Yes, it will. God's grace will give you strength even after you've fallen. But there's a group of people out there that use God's grace as a cover-up to continue to walk in sin. But I want to tell you, don't make that mistake. And I want to read you the scriptures. Look what the Bible says here. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. Look what Peter tells the New Testament church about their freedoms in Christ. Look what he says. Live as people who are free. You're free. Imagine these people. They had 613 laws <laughs> that they had to keep. That wasn't too peaceful. That was very stressful. But now through Jesus Christ, they're free. And Peter's telling them, live as free people. You're free. Serve the Lord. Love the Lord. Love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're free. Walk in your freedoms in the Lord. Live as people who are free. But then he tells them this. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. He's telling them, don't use your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but live as a servant of God. Are you living as a servant of God? See, that word has a bad definition with it nowadays. Servant. We think of somebody who's mistreated and abused. But that's not what the Bible's speaking about. The word that the Bible is using is bond servant. Somebody who has willfully, voluntarily, because of a need that they had, given themselves over to service of someone else. Whether they were in starvation or whether they had a debt that they could not pay. And they told the person, I'll serve you. All I need is food. All I want is food. Or they told the person, I'll serve you, pay my debt, and my life will be yours. I'll serve you with my life. They would serve that person out of gratefulness and responsibility. The Bible is telling us to live as servants of God. Why as servants of God? Because we were starving. The Bible says that we were all dead in our sins and trespasses. Spiritually speaking, we were dead. Not only that, but we also had a debt that we could not pay. We had a sin debt that we would never be able to pay. Even if we lived 100,000 lives, we would never be able to pay it. As a matter of fact, if we lived 100,000 lives, we would just keep adding on to that debt. But through Jesus Christ, what does the Bible call Jesus? The bread of life. He gave us, he gave us the spiritual nourishment. He gave us the spiritual food that we need. What did he tell the Samaritan woman? Those who believe in me from within them, rivers of living water shall flow. So not only does he give us the food and the water, but he also pays a debt that we will never be able to pay. The sin debt. In the eyes of God, we were sinners. But through Jesus Christ, now we're free. Now we're saints. Now we're righteous. Now we're justified. He gave us the food. He gave us the drink. He gave us the freedom from the debt. So now our responsibility is to live as servants, not to sin, as servants of God. See, nowadays people are very self-entitled and they're very arrogant. And, and, and you heard this expression, they bite the hand that feeds them, right? I want you to imagine somebody who had a, a million dollar debt. And here comes a family member and pays off the million dollar debt because they love the person. They love their family member, so they pay off the million dollar debt. And then one day that family member tells them, hey, you know what? I have some yard work and, and I was just wondering if you can come help me, you know, clean my yard and cut my grass. Imagine if the person who just finished having their $1 million debt paid off saying, nah, I ain't going to do that. What, you think just because you paid my $1 million debt, you think now I owe you something? That's no integrity right there. That is an ungrateful, entitled heart. Out of gratefulness and out of responsibility and out of integrity, that person should willfully say, oh, man, of course I'll be there. At what time do you need me? That's a small thing compared to the debt. That he was just forgiven. Remember the story of the woman who came and anointed the feet of Jesus? And she washed the feet of Jesus with her tears and dried them with her hair and she anointed the Lord. And remember what the disciples were saying? Why, why this waste? That could have been sold and the money could have been given to the poor. And Jesus tells one of the Pharisees a parable and he tells him this. He says, look, one person was forgiven a $100,000 debt. One person was forgiven a $100 debt. They have both debts were forgiven. Who do you think is going to be more grateful? The one that was forgiven 100000 or the one that was forgiven 100 The Pharisee answered correctly. And he says, well, I suppose the one who was forgiven a larger debt. And he tells the Pharisee, look, you invited me to your house, but you didn't even greet me. And you haven't even asked me for a cup of water that if I'm thirsty. You haven't even asked me if I'm thirsty. But this woman, since I've got here, she hasn't stopped crying at my feet and she hasn't stopped washing my feet. 
and drying it with her hair. He says, you know why this woman's doing this? This woman's doing this because she's been forgiven much. You know what Jesus was telling that man? You're ungrateful. You don't understand the magnitude of the forgiveness that God has brought to your life. This woman does. So I want to tell you, have you been forgiven much? Be grateful much. Don't live entitled. Don't live ungrateful. Don't use your freedom in Christ to cover up your sin. The Bible says, use your freedom to live as a servant of God. I pray this video was a blessing to you. If it was, do me a favor. This is a growing channel, and it would really bless my life if you would subscribe. If you like this video, if it was an encouragement to your life, subscribe. I post weekly videos just like this that are aimed to encourage you in your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or this video, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.